Christian and Connor B. Judge Foundation, this is Demystifying NMO. With support from Genentech. Welcome back to Demystifying NMO. I'm your host, Chelsea, and we are going to talk about the rare of the rare, a dude with NMO. So we know that NMO SD, or NMO spectrum disorder, it overwhelmingly affects women, as most autoimmune diseases mostly affect women, including multiple sclerosis. However, in NMO SD, it's a very, very high proportion, impacting women more than men, up to 10 to 1. So that's a huge proportion. However, people like my brother, Connor Judge, males living with NMOSD. And so our last episode was on what is it to be a woman living with NMO. And today we're going to focus from the perspective of a man with NMO. So I'm really happy and grateful to have my brother, Connor, um, on the pod. We have the Connor B. Judge Foundation named after him. He was diagnosed with NMO back in 2014, and he has had quite the journey overcoming blindness and paralysis from his severe first presenting attack, and then learning how to cope and accept his diagnosis and prognosis. You can hear his story on our earlier episodes um, of season one, I think episode two, and he talked about the treatments that he uses and his awareness of the different available treatment options for people with NMO. And you know, this time is really just going to be focused on the impact, the human impact of NMO on my brother and his perspective as a male. So how he feels um, as a man to be in a sea of women, um, treatment effect concerns, the impact of steroids on how he sees himself, his identity, including his body image, as well as the societal image of being a man versus being a dude with NMO. Talk about his work-life balance, um, what it looked like before, um, and what his, you know, his daily life looks like now, as well as his dating life dating and love life. And then we'll get into friends and family and just his overall perspective, which as a sister, I'm really proud to see that he's grown so much. So let's get into it. Hey, Connor, how are you? Thanks for hopping on. Hello, Chelsea. I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Enjoying the Sunday. Um, and, you know, thanks for hopping on to talk about what it's like to be the rare of the rare, a guy, a dude with NMO. You know, do you want to just talk a little bit, like, in your own words, what it's like to be in a sea of women when we know there's such a high, like, proportion of NMO affecting women more than men, almost, like, 10 to 1? What, is, what does that feel like? Uh, I guess it used to be, like, kind of interesting to me, and I guess that kind of just wore off, but... I really don't, I don't really feel a type of way about it anymore, Chelsea. I mean, that sounds like good. Like, so it sounds like maybe at first it wasn't like, it didn't like weird you out or anything, but did you feel like different or? Yeah. yeah. And I guess like when you first love it, like you want somebody to like talk to that you can relate to. Mm-hmm. And I guess there wasn't that, but now I guess I've just gotten so used to it or I've just like figured myself out. So it, it don't, I don't even notice it. I think it's kind of interesting but i don't really notice it i mean that's good so like you don't think about it in your daily life anymore exactly yeah but it is it must feel weird to be like an outlier in something and yeah i guess it could be hard to relate at first but i'm assuming like you found ability because you connect with a lot of people with nmo about like overlapping symptoms and how it affects you guys right yeah for sure so on our last podcast, which was a focus on living with NMO as a woman, there was a ton about treatment effects, like how it can affect your overall lifestyle, not necessarily even like your long-term medication, but like your symptomatic meds or like the steroids and how it can affect how you see yourself, body image. Do you, Yeah, you feel that way? So there's more overlap between men and women. Yes, definitely. Yeah, like obviously the gaining weight from the steroids, like obviously it's going to affect how you see yourself and whatnot. Yeah, and like for you right now, you look like really good and healthy and not that you don't always look really good and healthy, but I definitely, you know, know that you've gone like through, I don't know, like ups and downs, would you say, with how you see yourself because of, you know, how you have to manage NMO? 100%, but like obviously like the longer you're off the steroids and off any meds that you don't really have to be on anymore, you're going to feel better and then your body will respond to that, like, you know. Mm-hmm. And you'll just slowly feel better. And luckily, I haven't had to be on steroids in forever. So I feel normal again. But yeah. And like we say this with the big caveat that you are, like you take preventative medication, immunosuppressants, so you don't get relapses or at least not as bad. 
Correct. Um, but what about like for the symptoms of NMO? Um, obviously, like the paralysis that you recovered from was huge, and I'm guessing like changed how you saw yourself. Definitely, like if you're an athlete, like I, I wasn't like an athlete or anything, but like playing basketball and just like being active in general, and like when you can't do that as much, especially like sports like basketball, you're gonna like think of yourself a little differently. But just because like you can't do one thing as good as you used to, maybe you can do something else better. Mm. Like for me, I, but you know me, I really, so like you just you just find your talents where you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like they they out. evolve. Yeah, I love yes, that. Exactly. I think that's beautiful. You know, so that was ma the major thing of something like paralysis, which obviously is going to change, you know, your ability to do certain things even after you recover. But I just think of like, for me, the huge thing was like, you were a landscaper before you had an MO. And obviously that totally changed your ability to do that. And like, you know, I know like that probably took a while to just like accept. And, and like you said, evolved to like, you know, oh, I can do other things better now, though. Yes. Yeah, it definitely did take a while to accept for sure, like a good while. Like, I feel like at, like a few years, really. Yeah, it, like coming to terms with it, accepting it. And then it's like that alongside being on the medication. It's all at once. It's not just like one thing at a time. So it's like the combination of everything, just like boom. Right, you weighing gotta do on with you. All of it at once. It's it's extremely overwhelming, and I like know like it can be depressing and anxiety inducing, and 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 all and yes, like you know, good feelings too, inspiring, and like you know, you're overcoming like tremendous adversity and all that. It's gritty. It's not like always pretty, right? For sure, gritty AF. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what about what about like some of the residual? Uh, symptoms of animal like spasticity pain how do, does like that impact you and how you see yourself it used to like i feel like these days i used to pity myself a lot and now i just i tr try not to pity myself anymore and i just try to like overcome or like just somehow overcome it and you're like and obviously like i feel like my brain's kind of like rewired itself in a way or just kind of gotten used to all that but it's just about finding ways to deal with it, like physically and mentally. That's the heart of it, right? Like you had to dramatically change your perspective, like shut For down sure. the ego, I think. Try to. Yeah. yeah. So I just would like to know, right, so much you've had a big identity shift, you know, living with NMO. Yes. And accepting it and being this like, honestly, new, deeper version of yourself. But you're going against a societal image of what being a man is in a lot of ways how i mean that has to be a lot maybe i just like i don't even i guess i really don't even think of it like that i feel more manly than like regular men or i just feel like they're like like they're very narrow I and mean, i don't know like i just feel like i'm what am i trying to say here i feel like oh, sorry I'm no these are this is a difficult concept here. yeah it is. and we're asking like, heavy questions it's like society what it means to be a man is like like they're just like a pinpoint and it's like a whole you know like piece of paper to be like they just, i can't frame it right i get what you're saying though i think i do yeah. it's 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 you know society's definition of being a man is so small and restricted it's and so narrow, narrow. It's, yeah, and it's exactly. not the complete whole picture of what being a man actually is exactly it's so much deeper than that and it's just about being like i don't know a person a person more than a man mm. i almost kind of embrace any just beautiful part of yourself no matter what if it's manly or not if it's a beautiful part of you yeah, you're just embrace it i think it's all about balance like every person has some masculine and feminine in them you just gotta like find your right balance exactly that's a complicated question it's complicated <laughs> so we kind of talked about work and like before nmo you worked as a landscaper and then after nmo you had to obviously figure out everything what do you do now to pay the bills or whatever I mean, really, I'm just super lucky. As you know, like, I took, how long did it take for me to get disability? Like, almost five years. So you're sharing that you're on disability to help make ends meet, you know, living yes. with NMO. And yes. have you, faith, like, there's a lot of stigma in society, be, society about disability. Like, do you feel that? Or are you just more, like, yeah, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about that? I know there is that stigma, but, like, luckily I don't feel it. I just, because I don't think of it like that, because I know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you think of disability? That, how do I think of disability? I think it's just like, it is what it, like, if you need, if you deserve it, then you have it. Like, 
it's not a lot of money, but it's just enough to get by. And it's just enough to like be somewhat content. Mm-hmm. To so get your like, basic needs you met. Live. Exactly. You know, I know like the things that would obviously like really be a bother or be harmful for you to work, right? The spasticity, the pain, like if you'd have to stand around all day, like am I am I in like am I missing something else that'd be like huge? No, that's about it. It's unlike my back and stuff, just yeah. all that. And like maybe probably like, you know, like a lot of people's NMO of like urinary frequency. The yeah, the heat, right. And like urinary Oh like, yeah. Bowel even. Yeah. Yeah. To your point for people who need it, it should be an option. A hundred percent. And like I like if it's, I don't want to be on it my whole life if I like it just gives it allows me to like be content so I can find other options. Oh, exactly. Yes. So, so it doesn't have to be a forever thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, for when you need it. For for the people who need it when they need it. Exactly. It's just like a little assistance to get to get you where you're going. Yeah. So you talked about, you know, just like how NMO and the treatments have impacted your body image, your work life. And then, you know, obviously, like, definitely has an effect on your dating life. <laughs> like, Oh, for sure. Like, I know you've had been on dating apps in the past with... What was that like as a guy with NMO? Well, luckily, you, as you know, I'm with the best woman in the world, Madison, so I don't have to be on that anymore. But yes, I was. I, I never really had any issues with it. I was always just very upfront about my situation. And then, I don't know, if, I feel like if, as long as you have some personality, that you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. it too much. Just be open and mm-hmm. be yourself. And I never let it really hold me back whatsoever. So you're really upfront about it. I mean, I could be like too honest, brutally honest. Mm, I think that that's good. We had a, that episode on interpersonal relationships in NMO, and that was that was me with um, three women living with NMO. A big theme that from that was the communication is huge. Like people are open, authentic, and upfront um, about sure. who they are, and like NMO like pushed them more to be that way, and like they're grateful for it actually. Yeah, because it can make your relationship better. Like, you need that communication, like, and that's just going to make your relationship better in the long run. Yeah, and kind of when you were on the dating apps, you say you're really upfront about, you know, NMO and how it impacts you when you're, you know, just meeting someone. How do you break that? Like, how do you talk about it? I try to always use humor. Like, when I'm talking about, like, my erectile dysfunction, just, like, and it really is, like, a joke to me nowadays. Like, not, like, in a sad way. No, I know what you mean. I just, I, like, I just have that humor in me, so, like, everything is just funny to me. But, yeah, I just, I just make a joke out of it. Well, since you brought up, like, ED and sexual dysfunction super prevalent in NMO, you know, not just men, also in women in different ways, are, can, uh, we can be, I mean, this is weird, right? You're my brother, <laughs> really glad, you know, how... It is what it is. Yeah, how how is that, like, in your relationship? I'm sure you guys obviously, like, talk about it, and there's, like, more than just one way to have sex, obviously. Yes, exactly, and it's like, like I was saying with the like, like with like basketball. Just because you're not good at that anymore, you can be better at something. Mm-hmm. Put more time with something else. You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Way, it doesn't really matter. Like as long as you like love the person mm. and they love you, you're gonna find a way to please each other, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, so you are obviously very open about that too in your relationship, like with intimacy. And like, do you think that's the norm? Like, do you think that outside of NMO and people with chronic illnesses like that, do you think that that's the norm in relationships? I don't know, because like the relationships I was in before, it wasn't like that. It's like very surface. Mm-hmm. It's like, you don't really like, it's not like that deep, especially when it comes to like sex stuff. Yeah, yeah. You don't, like, have that open of communication usually, so at least you, in my experience. Yes, yeah, so, like, once again, like, NMO kind of makes your relationship more, like, stronger because you have to be so upfront and so communicative. A hundred percent. What about treatments? Like, you know, when it comes to sexual dysfunction, do you use any of those? No, because, like, the pills are, like, Cialis and Viagra don't work for me. And, mm. like, my, I'm prescribed, like, the shots. Oh, but like that, yeah, that seems literally intense. a shot you have to, yeah, shoot in your penis. But like, <laughs> I've just never used it. Okay. I'm just going to say it's each their own and whatever you're comfortable with, obviously, yeah. and like what works for you. But I just was curious. It's nice to know there's an option. Yeah, yeah. 
Finally, Connor, so we've talked about so many intense things, you know, your identity, how you, you know, how to change your whole work life and accept disability. Is this, you know, option for you right now to figure out your next path and like take care of yourself and like dating and sex? So obviously you're on a podcast talking about all this stuff for a foundation named after you with your sister. So, you know, it's an, it's an interesting family relationship. Do you feel like you always have to manage people's expectations? Like, do you feel let down? Do you feel like you're letting others down? Like, you know what I mean? Like I could see it going both ways and that's a lot to deal with as a person. I used to, I definitely used to, but now like, now it feels as long as I'm like truly working on myself and I'm like truly trying to improve in my own way, then like, cause I know that's what my family wants, I know that's what you want, then like that's all I got to do. And if, and if I'm not lying to myself and I'm actually like doing the work, then I feel good. Yeah, literally all all anybody who loves you wants is for you to be healthy and happy and yeah, growing yourself into this great person that you are that's super <laughs> positive and has good energy. I love it. Thank you. I try. My perspective being your sister seems appropriate. It's just you've grown a lot the past five, six years that you've had NMO. And obviously, like, I don't think we should sugarcoat the bad. Like, it's been bad. It's been difficult at times. But who you are now because of it, like, I think getting to the acceptance stage and, like, discovering yourself again through the help of disability in your relationship and being super honest. You're a very cool person. Not that you were before, but you're <laughs> a, like, more complex cool person now. Definitely. Like, I feel grateful because I feel like it made me more interesting and it made me more deeper. You sound like a better man, Connor. I know it's made me a better man. Mm. I love your positivity, your outlook, your evolving perspective. Thanks so much for talking to us about what it's like to be a man living with NMO. Mm -hmm.